Hey everybody, I bet you weren't expecting to see me. Yeah, it's Matt, and this is Matt's Reef Tank. Um, I'm supposed to be on the road on a three-wheeled recumbent cycle traveling around the world filming documentaries for my Jio Travelog series. Unfortunately, you guys are gonna be some of the first to hear that uh, I had an accident. A truck hit me on a rural road in China. Uh, they ran over my trailer, ruined some of my gear, ran my trike off the road, which is in disrepair, and sent me to the hospital with a broken clavicle. Uh, I am here, back in Ningbo. I flew back here. I had surgery. I have a bunch of hardware in my shoulder and 11 screws holding my clavicle together. And while my bone heals, I'm back at the beginning of the journey, back at my office in Ningbo. Um, I had been gone around three months, and during that three months, my employees uh, were tasked with taking care of the tank. I probably did not give them enough information because what happened is they overfed and they didn't do any water changes. It's my fault, I'm a bad teacher. So they, uh, the tank fell into disrepair over time. What happened is what would happen if you overfed and uh, did not do water changes. There was too much biological waste in the system. Nitrites skyrocketed, nitrates skyrocketed, and ammonia levels skyrocketed, throwing off pH and all other levels. Also, something that happened is my dosing system for KH, magnesium, and calcium got um, bound up. What happened was the dosing system pulled all the material out and what was left at the bottom of the calcium and the KH was a thick layer of solidified material which got into the feeding tubes, basically seizing up the system that was feeding and dosing the material into the tank. So the tank was not receiving its dosage, was not receiving any water, basically the whole thing uh, uh, kind of ground to a halt. What happened was with the rising levels of ammonia and nitrates, some things filled in the gap to feed on that excess nutrient, algae. Uh, a lot of hairy algae. My reef tank turned into a prairie, basically a grassland. This is actually not so bad. When I got here, it was completely covered in grass. Most of the corals were not visible, the corals that were left. And uh, I got to work almost immediately with my good arm, getting in there and removing whatever I could by hand. Now there's still quite a lot of algae here. Um, there's some red algae as well as some hair algae, uh, all sorts of uh, uh, greenery to absorb all those excess nitrates. Uh, what I did immediately was after I grazed what I could, I did daily multiple water changes, big ones with uh, big garbage can uh, containers of purified salt water brought up to temperature, ready to go. So I did that for a week. Uh, I replenished the tank's volume probably two or three times, trying to bring everything into balance. Uh, and now the pH is level. Uh, I've cleaned out the system for calcium and KH and magnesium, and they're being fed properly. And now I can assess the damage and see what has happened. Now when you have a nitrate explosion like this, the first fatalities in your tank are often the invertebrates, which is what happened here. I lost most of my snail cleaning crew, most of my hermit crabs, as well as my shrimp, which were really great personalities in the tank. They all did not make it. The problem with this kind of thing is that the death of these organisms, because they're often very meaty, is that they enhance the nitrate explosion, so it's just compounding the problem. Uh, at this point in time, though, I have everything level. Uh, all of that decay has been uh, absorbed into the water. The water has been changed, and I think I'm at a good state right now. But I have a lot of remaining algae in the tank that needs to be cleaned. I've purchased a new cleaning crew of 50 snails and 50 hermit crabs to go into the tank and uh, try and reduce the remaining amount of algae down to zero. It's kind of strange living in China because in America you buy cleaning crew kits from Live Aquaria or any sort of store. They understand the relevance of having a big group of cleaning organisms to go ahead and pick all the rocks clean and give you that beautiful coralline algae purple glow. 
In China, it's very hard to find dwarf hermit crabs. Uh, they just don't see the logic in having these organisms. They feel like they're more nuisance animals than, than beneficial. Uh, I'm gonna try and prove them wrong with this experiment today. Beyond the invertebrates I lost, I lost a lot of my hard corals that had survived that, that initial blow when I took the vacation before I left on my permanent trip. Uh, as you can see here, my plate coral is almost completely gone and uh, my hard corals throughout the tank, some of my favorites are gone. Uh, even some of the soft corals have seen, seen better days. When you have a disaster like this, you can also see who the hardiest organisms are. And some of the um, softies that I've had in the tank are actually thriving under these circumstances. I'm not exactly sure why, but it kind of gives you an eye into what organisms survive better in in different sorts of environments. The other thing that you have to rely on is the strength of nature. I'm really excited about getting the cleaning crew in here because what they're gonna do is they're gonna remove all the algae and you're gonna see who has survived the brutal environment, the harsh reality of what they've been exposed to over the last three months. And I think I'm gonna be pleasantly surprised. I've already seen some of the SPS corals hiding underneath the waves of grain, you might say, of this algae. And once all the algae is removed, I'm sure that I'm gonna see a lot more survivors of, uh, of the trials that they've had over the last three months. So I'm gonna wait for that, uh, that shipment to arrive and then I'm gonna get back into this tank. Okay, so all of the crabs and the snails have arrived. It took two days for them to get here and the water was really cold. So I'm uh, going to acclimate them a little bit and get them in the tank. A lot of times when you buy from Chinese stores, suppliers, uh, you'll get a lot of variety. So they gave me a variety of snails. And it's funny, one of my employees said, are we gonna eat these? Because most of the time you see these, they're in a pot and they're all boiled and you're pulling them out of the shell to eat them. Another thing that they gave us was a big hermit crab. And uh, I'm gonna put him in the tank and I'll see how he does. Hopefully he doesn't prey on any unsuspecting victims in there. Um, he's got a big enough shell so that he can't hide, so that if he does try and attack anything, I can pull him out right away. And so I'm gonna disperse these throughout the tank and uh, watch them get to work cleaning out all that algae. So it's been a week and I've seen a lot of algae reduction in the tank. It went from a forest to a kind of a mountain range now again. I'm seeing a lot of that coralline algae come up as well because not only am I reducing the amount of algae in the tank, but I'm doing a massive amount of water changes. I'm not relying just on the addition of the invertebrates to help eliminate my algae problem. I've done about five or six 10% uh, water changes and I have uh, also been doing a lot of grazing. Uh, a lot of times I'll remove as much hair algae as I can with my hand, and then the next day I can see purple coralline algae rock. It's just picked completely clean, as if the invertebrates are waiting for me to do the large job so that they can kind of get in there and do that surgical strike on all the algae. One thing that I have realized is that there is a villain in the tank. His name is Hercules, and he's a gorilla crab. Uh, I think I noticed him months and months and months ago, but he was quite small. Well, today I got a good look at him. He was kind of peeking his eye out behind one of the shaded areas, and he is huge. He's about, 
I don't know, maybe five, 10 centimeters wide. So uh, Hercules needs to get out of there. So I did some research and found out how to build a crab trap. I basically took a water bottle from, from the office and uh, engineered uh, a one-way flap. And I'm gonna put some shrimp in there, lay it down, and hopefully tomorrow uh, I can see Hercules in it. Who knows? I don't know if it'll work. He seems smart enough to survive for so long. I, uh, I wouldn't put it past him kind of outwitting the test, but uh, we'll see. To trap a gorilla crab, you have to find the area where you've seen him the most. And if you can identify that area, you lay down the trap with some, some good fresh shrimp meat and you put it in the back of the uh, trap container and you lay it out there overnight. Uh, typically, they don't stay active during the day. It's at night when they go out and hunt. I'm hoping that tomorrow I can come in and see Hercules in the trap waiting for me. At that point, I have the choice of whether to liquidate him or uh, incorporate him into something else in the tank. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put him down in the sump. He can chill out, grow up, and not hurt anybody particularly, and I won't have to commit murder in the process. Now, while I was talking, I figured that uh, I might go ahead and do a final grazing and try and get that last remnants of hairy algae off the rocks. And I'll give you a few tips on when you do uh, some removal with your hand of algae in the tank. One thing that you don't want to do too much is when you're ripping it off, have the water going, because what you're going to do is you're just going to throw that algae everywhere in the tank. So I turn off my pumps, I shut off the overflow, and I shut off the returns as well. So now you have a stagnant environment. I also turn off any wave maker pumps that I have as well. So I pluck off as much, uh, as much hairy algae as I can, clean everything up, and then I come through with my water change, and that's the key too. Because if you're plucking it off, you're still creating a lot of debris that's gonna fly around as soon as you turn those pumps on. But if you do a water change, you can come around, vacuum it up, and it goes right into the wastewater. You dump it out, you put in some fresh water, and you got yourself a really clean water change uh, that really is efficient, efficient way to do a water change and an efficient way to do your grazing. Now the water's powered off and I can start grazing. One thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure to get as to the root of the algae as you can get. Obviously you wanna leave as least amount in the tank as possible. Whatever you can trap in your fingers, obviously you remove from the tank, and then whatever is remaining, you can suck up when you do the water change. One thing that I have noticed already is that a lot of the coral that I thought was dead and gone was actually surviving underneath all this grass. This area here has a considerable amount of SPS that had been hiding and there's actually some growth in the back here as well.
Okay, so I have uh, plucked off as much algae as I can. The tank is in a little bit of chaos right now and I've installed the trap for the uh, big gorilla crab. And we will see tomorrow uh, in the morning if that has done any good. That shrimp has a little freezer burn on it, but I imagine they're scavengers, so meat is meat. <laughs>